It was actually really good. And uh, what, it, what, what it's really about is not having anything in your mind when you're adjusting and really having the awesome awesomeness, um, the awesomeness of chiropractic in mind and not saying what we want to heal in this person or whatever it might be. Um, ultimately, just the awesomeness of chiropractic and being clear and letting that innate, that person's innate do its job. Let that spirit do its job properly. So I'm going to start reading. And then Barry, do you mind if I hand it over to you after that? Cool. All right. We're on page 148. The law of averages and percentages enters all controversies of high and low fees oh, or none at all. The tour who receives the low fee contribution may not give all necessary attention to his case, uh, his necessary attention his case deserves and thus overlook doing things he should, neglecting some essentials to make accurate and efficient service to get sick well. Even with the rapid turnover of multiple cases per day, the average of frequencies of what might be called a hit or miss method is a bound to strike a certain low average or percentage of adjusting right places. The right times, right manner, and get get the low percentage of case as well, even at even that he misses a certain high average and percentage not delivered res, not deliver results, he should be he should because of enforced rapid turnover. So he may in short in so short a time. That's a mouthful. I tell you this. He's talking about the guys rushing through just doing a, you know, a cheap job, not just certain necessarily inexpensive, just a cheap job, low quality, right? Okay. Contrast with the tour who puts in a lot of time on each case, applying many or all techniques in lots of time on each case, apply, excuse me, and applying all many or all techniques and methods foreign to the tick process and principle to convince cases he is earning his high fee, doing things completely complicated and multiplying, which actually detract from his delivering the simple and single principle and practice, which when applied does get sick people, sick people well. What his average or percent, what is his average or percentage? The fact that he can charge high fees is no proof he is doing things right to get sick people well. In spite of his of this reverse in method, his average may be much lower the, than the low type of tour, tour fees which he, could be, he commands. Mouthful. All right, the reverse of this has merit. The tour who charges uh, or receives what might be what might be is considered a low or small fee, it, if it is a fee at all, which is debatable, whether a, do, a, a donation at the door might be so considered when dropping a, a stipend in the collection box, whether such an income is commensurate to what an average professional man is entitled to have earned because of his years of preparation, education, equipment, etc., to establish his office and his salary for help, for help to maintain them. All right, I'm gonna pause there because that's all a lot of mouthful and uh, run on sentences, but he's talking about fees. And this is really the first time, we mentioned this last time. And uh, you know, just because you're spending a lot of time doesn't mean it's worth a lot of money. Just because you're giving it away and trying to see masses of people doesn't mean you're really getting to what really needs to be done. Would you guys agree? You got any input on that? So uh, let's see. I'm going to keep moving on. In establishing his low fee system, with its increased drawing power for a large clientele, which limits time he can spend upon any one of one and every case, 
he is compelled to boil down to little, if any, essential uh, cardinal effects as to what he does, how, where, when, why, to attain ultimate uh, constructive survival. Uh, of a uh, survival of value of getting sick well, thus eliminating all foreign issues. What are the essential cardinal facts? A vertebral subluxation, its adjustment done at the right time, right place, right way, knowing when to, when not to do anything necessary, unnecessary, knowing when to, when to quit fussing, fooling, adding, Fold the rolls, whatever that means. <laughs> Quit rigging or rigging appearances between tour and patient. Small fees demand simple method. After all, tick is a simple principle, practice, and procedure. Instead of this, tour endeavoring to impress patients with his grandiose personality and that he does the cures, he should and does leave his conclusions of the fact to innate in the patient and does not camouflage issues between the truth and bald. Instead of this, the tour endeavoring to impress patients with his grandiose personality and that what he does cures and he should do and, and does leave his conclusions of fact to innate in the patient. So, yeah, he's picking on a lot of chiropractors here, right? In this whole thing. And where should we be? You know, a, a fee that's a, that is right for us. You know, someone said, you know, you shouldn't charge more than you can afford yourself. I've heard in the past. And, you know, we also have to feed our families. Finding the right thing to, do, to adjust in the right time, in the right moment. That's something special. Is that what something extra is that BJ was talking about? What do you guys think? I'm looking at that extra something as in that adjustment with that extra something, the intent behind it, not that extra something as in tip the people at the front desk when you leave extra something. <laughs> well, when he's clear in who he is or she, the chiropractor, and, you know, that is an innate to innate communication. That's why I say the adjustment's free. It's not free. It's priceless. It's a priceless thing. And like he's saying, you know, we have education, time, effort that we do to, to hone our craft to deliver the adjustment, um, you know, to, to relieve the, the subluxation on the human being. That really is priceless. We just have to keep the lights on. We have to support ourselves and live a good life. And a server deserves, and I don't say about myself, but, you know, we're giving, we should be able to get back and be in balance with the universe. We're in balance in giving and receiving for ourselves, not over, over trying to take advantage of someone else, and then also not sacrificing ourselves to give to others. We should be in absolute balance of those things. That's what our talk was this morning on my other podcast, actually. Um, Innate Express, if anybody wants to join in, we, we, uh, we record those in my morning workshops. I call my spirit hour at 8.15. My patients join in and stuff. So we have a good time with that. All right. You feel like reading, Barry? I do. All right. We are not here concerned on whether the fee system is none at all, a contributory one, or large enough to cover office overhead, or sufficient in size to declare a profit for his investment in his education, before opening his office. We are vitally concerned in preserving the good name of chiropractic and getting sick people well, knowing full well what is necessary be done to accomplish that ultimate objective for which chiropractic was born and for which chiropractors go forth to serve. If the chiropractor desires to be a philanthropist and donate his service to all, to all lot to all like, without discrimination, whether rich or poor, that's his business, and none should say him nay. If the chiropractor desires to place a contribution box at the door so that as each person leaves, he can drop into the collection plate what he thinks the service is worth, then that is also his business. 
I know BJ would say his or her here. If he or she prefers to make a reasonable and consistent charge for what he thinks his service is worth, delivering to it all alike, rich or poor, white or colored, male or female, regardless of acute or chronic case, irrespective that it takes one day or months of adjustments to get case well, that too is his prerogative and right. If he builds a clientele to where one well person tells another sick person and they stampede his doors to get his best service, that is also the right of the sick public to come to him rather than another. We find no fault in a small practice with a large fee any more than we do the large practice with small fees. If this is, if, and this is the vital discrimination factor, if what either does have to get the case well. One adjustment rightly delivered is worth anything at the cost to get well. Medical men get high fees and deliver nothing because they ignore innate within the patient flowing from above down, inside out. Instead, he is saturated with his theories that it is what he does and gives from outside in, below upward, what he claims has cured a value. This is frightfully expensive at all times and all ways because it calls for one experiment after another to cover many blunders. Adding fee upon fee without delivering health to get sick well. One is expensive without results. The other is beyond value because it does deliver results. But regardless of whether numbers who enter his portals be few or many, each entitled to a complete, exacting, exacting, accurate delivery of a health service based on factual information of that case and a delivery to each case of a service based on data secured which makes his delivery case get well using such equipment in his office, which makes him satisfied that what he does, where he does it, how, when, and where is within the purview and completeness of the chiropractic principle and practice. Then that is the right of certain fixed principles necessary to be sincere and true to the completeness of his chiropractic education with a due regard to respect his professional standing and his professional bearing due consideration to all his fellow members in rendering a complete service, which will prove at all times and in all cases, he is not rushing people through his office like an assembly line and one front door for rush through and out another by the minute. No chiropractor whose education and understanding of his responsibilities to his patient who is worthy of that title or regardless if he is the lone and only person in his office set up, can handle 200 cases a day and render the proper service his clientele is entitled to. Let's pause a second. Can we pause a second? What, what have you gotten so far out of what he's talking about? What do you think? So I think that it's great to actually hear BJ say, it's choice, it's choice, it's choice. That's it's what I'm the, seeing. It's the beauty we're given as human beings. What's unique is after he was saying that choice is that he jumped back to our philosophy and chiropractic and comparison to medical. And the differences there were quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And how we related the fee structure to the philosophies. Interesting. Yeah. You know, you know, Sigafus, the well, first thing he taught us, really, there's no such thing as time. And whether you're seeing, you know, 10 people or 100 people or 300 people, really, the constructs of time are within us. And when we're serving, time goes. Not one person feels slighted when they're adjusted. They're getting what they truly need in that moment. And, uh, you know, in missions, you know, we've done, you know, a dozen missions. And, you know, sometimes we see, you know, 800, 1,000 people in a day, and it felt like nothing at all, right? There's, wow, just that energy with people's lives changing. 
It's not about time we spend with people. It's about adjusting the proper sub, the subluxation and clearing them out and letting the body do its job, no matter how long it takes you. It's right for you, whatever it is. And I think that's our chiropractic freedom. We have a little bit of that. And uh, that's it. All right, should we finish this up? You know, it's interesting that you say that because he did right here. Of that case and the delivery to each case of a service based on, so it was based on that service, that interchange, or I should say exchange here. Um, what's also interesting on the previous page, I think it was very funny, well, I found it to be funny, is that if a chiropractor desires to be a philanthropist, so initially I get this idea of a chiropractor wanting to donate money, hand out money, doing well, but in this case, he's saying, you're donating your services. You're not collecting fees. You're a philanthropist chiropractor because you're giving away services. Oh yeah, I thought that was I thought that was cool. That gave me a chuckle, and I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I I know I have felt that way in my my especially the beginning of my career, and I've heard some stories of old guys with a box on the wall. They put a little bit of cotton at the bottom, so people wouldn't be embarrassed when they're dropping in their coins. Um, way way back in the day, you know. But, uh, and, you know, that's why I've said it is a lot of work having a box on the wall. You've got to educate people on your value. It's not easy having a box on the wall to do it properly. Don't let anybody fool you in any way. But, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. All right. You want to keep going? Sure, absolutely. If one the reverse, I believe he meant to say, meant to say if on the reverse, he has clientele of, say, 200 patients a day. And his office staff consists of A, a receptionist to receive and cup, keep records, B, an intern or interns to check cases pre and post with necessary equipment installed therein, C, one or more interns to spinograph, expose, develop, read, and analyze his films, reporting to the doctor, adjust or his findings. If you're outside of our profession, BJ's talking spinographs here um, are x-rays. D, and one or more expert adjusters to correctly administer the adjusting service each case is differently entitled to. Then with such an efficient service, there exists a core of assistance, which makes it possible to divide the service for which it is equipped to care for a large clientele, personnel depending upon demands of the clientele, then there is a division of the necessary services amongst the various members of the office crew. As simple as chiropractic is, as simple as getting sick people well is, it is not so simple, but what certain essentials are necessary to render competent service to each case according to his needs. Each case is individualistic, requiring different observations and study. If the chiropractic decides to charge a fee, he should go and fix what is all alike regardless of millionaire or pauper so that he who walks in sick and walks out well knows exactly what he owes the doctor for service rendered, except in such cases as demands is worthy of charitable services for reasons better known to the doctor and the client. The opposing group with their contrasting procedures is why we have mixers, medipractors. Instead of education of patients, how innate inside him cures, he follows conformists, patterns of adding unnecessities to impress the patient. That is, that it is what he does which cures, thus suggesting to patient his paying a big fee that had been earned by the tour. It is plain that if our service was rendered gratuitously, we would be jammed, crowded, overrun with sick people desiring to get well at no cost to them. This would force Tor to render a reduced quality of service, if any, defeating his primary objective, make it an impossible for him to maintain that kind of service which would, could, or did get sick well. This is a subject which would depend upon his sincerity, honesty, and capability to deliver what he should, to deliver what he should. These are personal issues which can only be settled in the multiple or ultimate by each individual, wherein no one person can force his views into the minds of another. There would be no criticism of absolute group 
be it large or small, voluntarily pooling common interests and agreeing to establish a fee system. From there on, each would endeavor to see how much he would give and deliver for that agreed fee. The case would then go where he thought he could and would get most for the fee, regardless for whom, regardless of to whom he went. We cannot fathom after 70 years dealing with hundreds of thousands of cases, having under our supervision and direction of the methods and provisions necessary to better serve a professional, how one person, any alone in one office can receive and render a competent professional service to 200 cases a day, can know where to adjust, how, where, when, and when not too low, can or possibly could render any sort of a competent health service to so many cases in a day, day after day, except by the hit or miss, I'll give them this, a promiscuous delivery of some sort to all alike without discrimination. He would have no way of separating one type of case from another to know whether he was or was not and when to and when to know not to, letting the Nate pick up from there to permit the case to get well. If a case was sick, tried many medical doctors, was given up to die, and then went to a tour, got one adjustment, and got well, get well, there was, that was worth any fee, no matter how large, because it saved his life. Saving his life is beyond a fee question, whether it be large or small. We have seen many bubbles come, gain momentum for a short time, then bursting for a once of a basic and fundamental of approach, favoring the rights of the sick to get well, to receive what they were entitled to. Awesome. That is, you know, the end of page 154, 153, and we're in an addendum right now, and this was added on. We've gone through this book, and it was, I think, one of my favorite reads. I love Dee Dee's writings. This was BJ at his essence. I really feel you could feel the passion coming from him. How did you feel? You've been through most of this with us, Barry, and uh, you did a lot of reading of it. Um, yeah. You got any insights? Yeah. The, um, you know, like we were discussing the last couple of weeks, it's really interesting that. Um, BJ's talking about fees here, because in the green books, you really don't see BJ talking about fees. Um, you talk about the exchange between a human and an eight and what's that worth, um, but not really talking about the fees. And, and in contrast here, he's comparing to the different systems that he's seen. What's interesting too is in this context, this is at the end of his life. And like he said, in his, uh, what did it say here? The 70 years? of the bubbles of chiropractic, of the things that he's seen. And you have to put in context, this was when chiropractic was illegal in the majority of states, for the especially at the beginning of his career, and the second half. And you have to remember, there was no insurance at this time. No insurance paid. And for majority of us chiropractors right now hearing this, that's foreign to us. That's, that's not even that's transformative for him. That's not even like another country you could travel to a thought. There was no insurance. So Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, the auto, the work comp was not even around for another 20 years here. Well, 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is huge and thick stuff that BJ is teaching us here about us understanding the right of sick people to get well and what our professional obligations are to deliver that service and be in that mindset and be with each individual. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm on board with you. And, you know, uh, where I am in reality, insurance doesn't pay for anything anymore anyway, <laughs> especially major medical. Everybody's got $10,000 deductibles and all those things. Only reason we check anybody's insurance to tell them how bad it is. <laughs> Here's my cash fee, ultimately, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, insurance doesn't pay for you to be well. 
And, you know, they just want you to be sick. You know, I used to, I got this from Joseph Eplett. He goes, of course, I've got health insurance, chiropractic care. I don't, and when I first heard him say that, I was like, yes, that's absolutely right. Because that's health assurance. Um, you know, the other stuff is really sickness assurance. If you follow along, just doing, going for your exams and using your, your sickness insurance, that's where people actually get the, the sickest because they just want to use it. Ultimately, you know, you have all that beautiful stuff inside of you and innate intelligence is at the helm doing what it needs to do. When all the variables come in, you know, we talked about this morning about uh, having, you know, a helicopter pilot. And I was really fortunate when I was a kid, like 17, uh, my buddy's dad was a, a lieutenant colonel at Fort Bragg. And we got to fly in the, the, the helicopter simulator which is like 20 feet off the ground on hydraulics. It was like Apache helicopter or something. And they just threw variables at these pilots. And we get so many variables that through the day, and it's really, it's our experience of how we handle it. There are no big things anymore, right? We make them into big things. Even the fees, sometimes we make it a big thing or insurance a big thing. In reality, people want to want you more than they care about their insurance or fees. They want to be well. They want you to deliver the adjustment to them. They have this one variable. Look, this variable is it doesn't really work here. You're going to get a couple of adjustments. That's about it. But you need this. And, uh, you know, it's about telling people the truth and then having a value for yourselves. We had to raise our fees just a little bit this year. We haven't raised in about two or three years. And, you know, things are going up. We had to put the prices a little bit higher. And, you know, we're, we're more expensive than many and we're less expensive than many. So, uh, you know, really finding where you feel, each individual feels right with their, their fees. And uh, I have one buddy in New York, what he does is he find out, finds out what everybody else is charging and then charges a little bit more. I'm like, wow, okay, that's pretty cool too. I like that. Whatever's really right for you. I want to remove barriers. And uh, Bob Satili at DE used to say, remove the barriers, let the people in. And if huge fees are a barrier, you know, I, I remove the fees. And I gave a break to a woman the other day. You know, I knew she truly needed the care. Financially, she can afford the full fee. And I said, you know, I'll give you a break. You know, this is between you and I. And even the people you refer, please just don't tell them what I'm, what I'm uh, charging you, if you don't mind. And I preempt that, you know, the people that you refer now, I'm expecting referrals, but still, you know, I want to offer this to you as, as my gift. When your financial, you know, situations change, we change our financial situation together because I won't deny anybody over fees. Like I said, the, the adjustment is priceless. Ultimately, they're guided to us by innate, by spirit, by God into your office and me to say, man, you can't afford it, or you don't have the right insurance, or you're not sick enough, you know, that's me, that's my junk, right, or our stuff, so truly is a welcoming office, I'm here to serve you, that's the way I feel, the, the, the fee is secondary, and that's probably why he's waited all this time, probably biting his tongue, or biting his fingernails, not to type about it, because he did, a, I know where was it? It's one of the books he talks about. Somebody wanted to start a, a coaching company. A failed chiropractor wants to start telling other people how to fail. I can't remember what book that was. Um, it might have been volume 33. I can't remember. Uh, uh, Fame and Fortune. I'm not sure. We'll find yeah. that one. Yeah. So, what do you got? What do you think? Where should we go next with this? You know, and, uh, what's interesting is that you you're, uh, you mentioned quite a few things here. That What's interesting is how BJ ended. Actually, well, this is all of his books. He ended on this chapter about fees and um, what you were talking about. And BJ was saying here, when I was reading it, I initially thought of DE. This is DE. He wrote down, do not let what they can or cannot do interfere with you delivering the service. But And I really respect BJ here where he said, it is up to you. You're the practitioner. You get to decide. What's awesome too, and what you were saying here the last several minutes is that he said, it is, you cannot see 200 people a day if you're a solo doctor, because you cannot locate, correct, analyze, collect fees. You get distracted. 
So like you were saying with the analogy of the helicopter pilot, all these variables thrown at you, this is proof in the pudding here and same with this analogy. Those are variables. When you're, when you're in the zone, you can easily get thrown off that zone when somebody asks a silly question like, hey, am I, are you open this Saturday or is it next Saturday? Or when, you know, the, all you have to do is say one little thing and your mind gets off that, you're off track. You're not in the zone of correcting uh, subluxations there or assisting and correcting the subluxations there. So what's interesting is that I did pick up on the DE talk here, do not turn anybody away. Um, BJ, this is, this BJ could have been standing at DE talking about this. This don't let the fees interfere with the delivery of that. You know, and, and that's the lasting purpose of DE to give, love, serve, do out of your own abundance without the expectation of return. Yeah. Now, yeah. And, and speaking of DE, I, I think about this exchange too, because you were asking earlier about the exchange. I'm like, well, there's that financial exchange. But there's also that spiritual exchange. And they do say finance is money is energy. However, Santo, Richard Santo used to always say, I should be paying the people that I'm adjusting. They do more for me than I do for them. I should be paying for each person. Now, this is huge for him to say, you and I, you and I know this, when you're truly in it and providing those services, our, our clientele, our practice members do more for us physically, spiritually, financially than it. this is why we're called here to be chiropractors. And we're so glad everybody's listening to. We're all here for a reason. Absolutely. And, you know, that is the gift really is we're getting what we receive. We're receiving what we give, you know, that each adjustment is, you know, we've said this so many times, we're also receiving what we give. I want to give the best that I can. So I'm also receiving it back clearly. And having this purpose, you know, he's just given us purpose. And at the end, he said, you know, if, if you think this, the whole book is really a rally cry. I had a student a little while ago, he had a post in, about, you know, it, you know, uh, imagine if, or what if BDD would have asked permission or this, or if he would have asked if this is, does this sound like a good idea to you? You know, that was the beginning of this book. And if we go back, and to me, it was like a rally cry. What if we would have done this? No way, we don't need that. You know, what if we would have done this? No way, we didn't need that. And this was really getting our purpose down as a chiropractor. And then really at the end of saying, you know what, men and women, you got to charge for this. Give a fair fee. You can go this way, you can go that way. You know, give people what they need, serve them well give them what you've got and be in balance because you also have to receive and feed your children and put shoes on your feet. So uh, I also felt this like a, as a rally cry in a way, you know what I mean? Serve and you also, you're allowed to be served as well, you know? You know, I really like that. And BJ talks about here at the end, like this is, um, this is an agreement between your innate and their innate and you're connecting them to the universe. Whereas when you, when you use the other types of groups, whether it's chiropractors selling or adding fancy things and equipment, you're trying, he's stating here that you, you're trying to make it look more um, valuable. And you're also trying to say, well, the cure is coming from this outside stuff. And then of course he jumps over to medicine saying, no, everything came from outside. Look, this procedure, that procedure, everything we did, that's coming from outside in. And he really he, uh, really separates those two, but he also puts in the chiropractor that adds all the fancy stuff over in the group to medicine. Yep. Because you are getting further and further away from Nate once you step outside. Once you step outside, you're, you're in that outside in yeah. treatment model. You give the value to your kinesio tape or you give the value to this instead of, you know, the only in your, your individual intelligence that heals the body. We were cleared that up. Give it a moment. You know, it's not the kinesio or it's not this pulsion or, or poultice that did it for you. He also talks about the guy who is, uh, you know, um, oh, it slipped my mind right now. I just had it. But yeah, it's, you know, it's, it, he's, he's giving confidence to the chiropractor of saying, you've got an amazing thing in your hands, serve it well, give it to the people you're allowed to receive from it as well. Yeah. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. He also is, is really talking about the guy or woman who is the fixer, 
you know, I'm taking credit for that adjustment. We do all these fancy things. Oh, I got you well. I didn't get you well. And you have that in your office. Thanks, Doc. You did it. You know, you did it. I, I, I moved the bone. Your body had to do all the work. It was, you know, I did my part. You bought, your body had to do the rest of it. You know, I moved the bone. God does the healing. So we also can't take credit for this. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. I say the same thing. I just assisted. I just assisted the powers within you. You know, uh, Hed, you're, you, you just had something that made me think of a common occurrence in the office. Um, especially for the new practitioners that are starting to, you'll get those other clients, patients in, whatever you call them, um, that'll come in and, and they have a nerve issue and they'll be like, oh, well, doc, I'm going to go get a nerve conduction test. And, uh, you know, sure enough, as a chiropractor, when you believe from above, down, inside out, you know, there's pressure on a nerve, especially if you're doing instrumentation. I know, uh, Dwayne from Titron is listening. Hello, Titronics. So when you ever, when you're, um, analyzing the spine and you're able to prove that these um, exist and a patient comes in from the outside in world and point of view that they grew up with well I'm gonna have a nerve conduction velocity test now I have fun with them um, and I'll look at them I'll go let me guess before you take the test if their symptoms if their problem was on the left side let me guess it's going to be slower on the left side really you think so sure enough it comes back it's slower on the left side. And sometimes it's like, why are the medical doctors doing this? They already know they're having problems there. Let's, let's prove it. Let's charge them. Let's charge the insurance company. Let's build this case up. And sometimes it makes you wonder if it's an insurance money thing because they just keep building and building cases. Let's go back and test. Let's go back and test. I just feel like it's it's uh, almost redundant to test that. You know they're already having problems. The nerve conduction velocity test, yeah, it's going to be weaker or not firing as well on one side compared to another. That always gets me. Well, you know, in that whole case building, what else do they have to do except diagnostics? That whole system doesn't actually do anything unless we're pilling them or or pulling something out. It's really all about diagnostics. Well, maybe I should get another MRI. What in the world is that another MRI supposed to do for you? Until you start showing up and being consistent, doing what I tell you, you're going to still have that same pinched nerve. I haven't seen you in two months. I don't care how much you complain about it. That didn't do anything to get it better. Or the shots that you got in your neck or the nerve block you just got. And you're just telling me you're going to, they're going to cauterize your nerve root. That sounds really healthy, doesn't it? Where else do you think those nerves go? I had a, a one woman, she's an MD and I won't mention even the, what she does. And she was like, you know, I think I'm just going to go get a nerve block. I'm like, what does you think that nerve is communicating to? What goes down my arm? Well, where else do you think it goes? And just that little bit of, let's scratch the surface. Well, you know, maybe is that part of my circulatory ganglia? Oh yeah, it goes to your heart and your lungs too. Let's cut those nerves. That doesn't sound like a smart idea to me. And she saw, she scratched her head. She's like, why didn't anybody ever tell me that? It's just the smallest little bit of deductive reasoning, actually, you know, and, you know, it sounds so great that we can do something, but really, should you do it? There's a two different worlds, right? And, you know, I've had people, they've left my office, they've gotten surgery, they've come back and uh, in worse shape. And some said they were better, like, I feel better now. Well, you know, we've changed the dynamics of where you were before. You also have to maintain your spine now. Because you don't want to really, I mean, you've changed the engineering. Those discs above and below are going to get beat up because now you don't have the flexibility either. So there's so much that we just want to bring to light to people just to think a little bit more clearly. And a lot of times they're desperate and they only hear about one one hundredth of what we're saying because the pain is pounding in their ears or whatever they're dealing with. And, uh, you know, they don't hear everything we say. We just have to keep doing our best and know that we were doing it, right? Yeah. I know you've been doing your best. Christian, I know you're doing your best. Everybody else on here. I mean, that's what it's really all about. You just keep serving. We Sometimes we, I, I feel it, you know, sometimes I just kick myself like I could have educated her better or him better or whatever it is, but we've all done our best. We let them go because it's not up to us. One last little thing. I remember Pasquale said to this, whatever's going on with them is none of your business. Like, oh, wow, you're right, really. You know, I want them to believe what I believe, 
but that's me, right? They're living their own lives no matter what. Yep. Yep. And there's a time and a place when it all unites. And whether we tell this person 30 times the first month or 30,000 times over the next 10 years, whenever they're ready to receive it, they're ready. And that's this is what I admire you on this podcast is that we're here for several reasons, but one of them is to transform the communication out there in the world about health coming from the inside, not the outside. And we're trying to spread the word. This is a new paradigm, a new way of thinking. It's deductive and, and versus the inductive, like you were saying. This is a new way of thinking and we're, we're here for you. And people can choose to go do surgery or leave and come back. I'm an open door as well, come back. You're still gonna have subluxations. The chronicity and the, um, uh, the plan is going to be different, of course. We have to work around things. But this is our goal is to serve and to teach the principles of chiropractic and the power of innate within the body. And that's all we can do. You know, that's we, we give. It's up to others to receive. Right. Well, we have finished. Now it's one of my favorite books. And I'm excited to move on. So next week, we're going to be in a new book. I'm not sure which one it is going to be. Okay. We've talked about uh, Palmer's Laws of Life. Um, we've talked about a couple of other ones. Maybe I'll send a message to some of our regulars and see where everybody wants to go. But uh, whip out, you know, Palmer Laws of Life, dust it off if you got one, because that might be where we're starting. I'm 80%. That 20% variable, we'll see where we go since we're talking about <laughs> variables. All right. Well, God bless you. Have an awesome night. It is 8.45 and we just jammed for, you know, the end of this book. And I almost don't want to leave it. Like, I feel like it's an end of an era, you know, but uh, it was a beautiful read. And I respect BJ even more now, just getting some of this from his heart and just feeling his passion from it. But uh, have a beautiful night and I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you so good much. Night, have a good night.